Hello everyone and welcome back to the TCEC Super Final. The, the Super Final already ended but we are going to cover some of the games since we were too busy covering the online uh, Super Tournaments that were happening at the time. This is game 65 from the TCEC Season 18, the Top Chess Engines competition. Leela Chess Zero with White against Stockfish and it's quite the game. Uh, we haven't had a game uh, like this in, in quite a while. Uh, but before we check out the game, I would just like to invite you to check out uh, a song about Paul Morphy. Uh, it's uh, the first thing you see in the description below. Do check it out. Uh, I, I enjoyed it myself. Thought you guys might enjoy it. So getting back to the game. Leela with the white pieces opens with d4. But the openings are pre-arranged like uh, uh, for all of the 100 games. Uh, it's uh, all book moves up until a certain point. But we will mention that. Knight f6 by Stockfish. We have c4, e6 and knight f3. And bishop to b4 now. Going for the Bogo Indian defense. Knight bd2 blocking and now uh, Stockfish castles. We have a3 challenging the bishop and bishop back to e7. We have e4. Grabbing the center and d5. Uh, Stockfish strikes in the center. e5 pushing the knight back. Knight fd7 and now bishop to d3. And here c5. Uh, here Lila goes for h4 and this is the last book move. So as of move 9, uh, Stockfish is on his own. So he goes for g6. Uh, and now a popular move uh, amongst human grandmasters is h5. But here uh, Lila decides to go for castles instead. We have knight to c6 and now knight to b3, opening up the, the dark square bishop's diagonal, uh, the knight also uh, helps out with the defense of the d4 square, and and so on. And here, uh, there are a few games that reach this position, for example, c captures on d4 is a known move, d captures on c4 was played in the 2018 Batumi Chess Olympiad between uh, Ding Liren and Ivan Sharic, where uh, Sharic captured on uh, c4, Ding Liren was able to win that game, but here Stockfish goes for just uh, a plain old pawn grab with bishop captures on h4. As we all know, Stockfish is a pawn grabber. Uh, and now uh, this is a new move, so already as of move 11, uh, a completely new game. So Lila continues with bishop to h6, puts pressure on the rook here, rook back to e8 and now rook to e1. Uh, we have uh, some trades in the center, c captures on d4, but first queen to c2. There's always time to recapture here as the pawn is attacked twice, so there is no rush. So d captures on c4, Stockfish grabs yet another pawn and the bishop captures on c4 now. We have knight to b6 attacking the bishop and now uh, it seems like a pretty normal move to just bring the bishop back. However, uh, Lila decides that uh, there's no need to bring the bishop back, just rook a to d1. Complete, uh, complete and full development. Uh, we have bishop to d7 by Stockfish uh, and now comes knight to c5, putting pressure on the b7 pawn. Uh, but Stockfish is, uh, you know, no beginner at calculating lines, so he just goes rook to c8, he says, uh, have at it, uh, grab that b7 pawn, uh, but it's not doing anything for white. For example, if knight captures queen c7, you have to go back with the knight, and now knight to a5, a double attack on the bishop by both knights, a double attack on the knight here, and it's, uh, well, uh, things have gone wrong for white. So instead, Lila just goes b4, uh, and here we have knight captures on c4. We have queen captures on c4, and now, uh, so you constantly don't have to worry about this bishop on h4, bishop back to e7. Uh, attacking the knight on c5, and knight to e4, which makes sense, this pawn uh, covers both of these squares, so you can go knight d6, you can go knight to f6, uh, and so on. However, uh, there is the problem of this nasty discovery. So if the knight moves, there's a nasty discovery on the queen, and that's exactly what Stockfish uses. He goes for knight captures on b4, now opens a discovery, the knight is nicely defended, so it's not a problem here. Uh, or, or is it? Uh, because here uh, we've reached the position from the thumbnail and here Lila just captured the knight. Uh, Lila played queen captures on b4. And are are the queens really that overrated? Uh, so what what's happening here? Uh, well, obviously you have to capture the queen. So bishop captures and now you have to be very careful. For example, if you try knight f6 check to throw in a nice move uh, before recapturing the bishop, black will just pick up the knight. And now after captures you will also lose the rook. And after all is said and done, you will uh, have this position where black is up two pawns. Uh, make, uh, yeah, make that three pawns. Three pawns and also is up the exchange. So black would be completely winning here. So uh, after this queen sacrifice, Lila just recaptures on b4. And says, what are you going to play now? Knight f6 is coming, then knight g5 is coming. I might be able to capture here, I might be able to capture there. How is Stockfish countering this? So first Stockfish uh, starts with f5. 
at least uh, he frees up the df7 square for the king. And okay, knight f6 check, we have king to h8, and now not grabbing material, but rather rook captures on d4. There's now a double attack on the bishop here, and if you're able to capture that, maybe the queen moves, and then rook captures on h7 will just be checkmate. So rook c7, Stockfish adds another defender, and rook e to d1, Leela adds another attacker to the bishop. We have rook to e7, adding another defender, uh, and now there's no way to add yet another attacker to the d7 bishop, so you just uh, start improving the position with b5. Uh, Stockfish goes for b6, and we have king to h2. Now Leela wants to bring the king all the way to g5. We have rook to b7. Stockfish has no good moves. Uh, you can't really do anything with, with the rooks. Uh, you can't move the bishop, uh, and there's not uh, nothing else. So Stockfish just has to wait here. Knight g5. Uh, by Leela, and now queen to c8. Unpinning, but it's not all that much. Rook 1 to d2. Leela just uh, uh, grabs more space with the rooks, and you can't move the, the queen. Uh, I mean, uh, then the, the bishop falls. If you move the bishop, then let's say you capture this, then just rook d8 to check, and it's game over. You lose the queen, and very soon the game. So after rook 1 d2, we have rook to c7. Stockfish, the, the sad stockfish, has to repeat moves here. Uh, and now rook to d6, grabbing even more space. Uh, we have rook back to b7, and now rook 2 to d4, grabbing even more space. We have rook to c7, and now rook back to d1. Something uh, I often call the dance of the engines, because uh, even though these moves do make sense in some lo you know long, long variation, to us humans, they, they really don't. So uh, I just call it the dance of the engines. Uh, rook to b7, and now rook 6 uh, back to d4. We have rook to c7, and now finally, as Leela depleted all the other options, continues with f4. Finally, a pawn move. Uh, rook back to b7, and now uh, there, there are good ways to continue this, but uh, Leela just goes for the more straightforward one. But even feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out what Leela played. How do you improve here? Well, I give you a couple of seconds. So for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the e6 pawn uh, well is uh, free for grabs. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight captures on e6. Uh, and now, of course, you still can't capture with the bishop because of rook d8. So rook captures on e6, but now uh, knight captures on d7. If you're thinking about rook captures uh, with the idea of rook ma just delivering mate after a, a trade happens here, it doesn't really work because after captures and captures, Yes, you are threatening mate, but there's also rook f6. And after captures, just captures, and you are completely lost. So you are doing well, uh, don't mess it up. Uh, so after rook captures on e6, we have knight captures by Leela. Now again, with the threat of just uh, moving the knight anywhere and delivering rook d8 check, which will end the game. So king to g8. Uh, Stockfish has to bring the king away from the corner. We have knight f6 check, king f7, and now rook to d8. Finally going after the queen. Queen to c5, and now knight captures on h7. Now the knight can come to g5, and it will not be pleasant for the black king. Uh, and also there is the threat of the immediate checkmate. For example, if you play a silly move like a5, then just knight g5 check, king e7, and bishop f8 is checkmate. This is covered, this is covered, 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 and there is nothing uh, to be done here for the black king. So rook to e8, uh, at least now you cover the f8 square, so white does not have knight g5 followed by bishop to f8 to checkmate. However, there is another move here, uh, now uh, e6 with check, and this is super problematic, because if you capture with the king, rook e1 check just leads to mate. After king f7, now you do have knight g5 check, king f6, and just uh, rook captures here uh, with uh, checkmate to follow very quickly. Uh, so after this e6 check move, Stockfish decides, okay, uh, it's time to capture with the rook, but now the rook is no longer covering the back rank, uh, and now knight to g5 with check. Also with a nice fork here, king f6, uh, and now rook to f8 with check. And now you have to give up the queen. If you go for rook f7, then rook captures on f7 is checkmate. So you have to go for queen captures on f8, but now just the bishop captures. And now, okay, it's only uh, a bishop and a knight against the rook. Uh, however, uh, black is completely lost here. Black can never move the rook from uh, from the sixth rank. So rook to c7, stockfish, the sad stockfish in this game, forced the repeat moves with this rook. Now rook d4. 
Uh, and again, the problem is you can never move this rook away. White can capture it at will. If you move it anywhere, just rook checks. Uh, rook has to block and this again will be checkmate. So after rook d4, we have rook to b7. Again, I mean, imagine if you, if you were playing stockfish, like, you know, from a human standpoint, and you force him to repeat moves like that. I mean, uh, how, how good would that feel? Uh, but yeah, I guess we, we'll never find out. Uh, so king g3. Leela now wants to plan uh, king to h4, capture the rook, and then bring the king over to g5 to enter a completely winning endgame. Uh, so rook back to c7, and now rook to d3, not allowing this check. Uh, but now rook back to b7. Stockfish is without a move. King to h4 by Leela. We have rook back to c7. And now not going for the capture right away, but back uh, king back to g3. Again, they go into their dance of the engines, which you know we'll, we'll, we'll just never understand. Rook to c4, and now that the rook finally moved from the 7th rank, finally rook to d7. But everything else is completely losing too, so it doesn't really matter. Rook to e3, check by Stockfish, king f2, and now there is nothing more to be done. This will be checkmate, so uh, Stockfish tried a few more checks. Check, captures, and rook a4, but now it's just uh, bishop to e7 with check. Preserving the knight. King to e5, now, okay, you can move to, to e5 finally, uh, but now king f3, and it was in this position on move 53 that Stockfish resigned the game, as uh, the material advantage is just too big, and of course they both agreed that the advantage is, is much too large to continue this game for black. So really, really uh, an impressive game. I, I I don't remember when was the last time we had we had one this good. Uh, that queen captures on b4 move was was you know nothing short of spectacular. And and it's not just queen captures. It's queen captures, bishop captures. So the queen has been sacrificed, and now we just recapture. And you give black the move, saying I am completely winning here. So really amazing game, and uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, do check out the song about Paul Morphy first thing in the first thing in the description below. Uh, uh, you guys might enjoy it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Matt Howells, uh, Samuel Coroniti, Shai Gross, uh, Mario Gudel, and Matthew Grove for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Paul Morphy saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.